everyone out there in YouTube, Rumble, and Twitter land. Yeah, yeah, I'm on there now, too. Absolutely. Okay, uh, welcome back to Diego Knows. And we're going to talk about, we're going to continue to talk about that uh, abortion uh, just like crap. All right, season two, this is episode three. God damn, episode three. What the fuck? We got another, what, five episodes, eight episodes to go? Some shit. Like, who gives a shit? Who, who knows? Who knows and who cares? All right? I'm Diego. I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view, okay? That's what I do here, okay? Now, if you are going to want to go out there and you want to know what people think about this show, you know, there's a lot of fucking YouTube channels out there. Uh, well, they'll, they'll talk. They'll give you a, a middle-aged woman's point of view. You know, there's a lot of fucking uh, gay guys out there that'll talk about this show. And tell you about the fashion and how fabulous it is or how terrible it is and all that kind of shit. I actually, I haven't seen uh, too many reviews that actually praise this show. I haven't seen any that praise it. Pretty much all the reviews that I've seen from other YouTubers have been, they, they've condemned the show. Okay. <laughs> so, if you want to know about that, if you want to know about like, you know, the fashion and, and the hair and what the fuck a Valentino is or a Gucci or the difference between a Birkin and a fucking and a Louis Vuitton, okay? Don't fucking look at me, all right? I don't fucking know shit. You know why? Because I'm not fucking gay. That's why. That's why. Because I'm not fucking gay, okay? And I don't have a vagina, okay? That's why, okay? I'm going to talk about the other stuff, okay? I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view, which means that I'm going to talk about the relationships. I'm going to talk about these women, how they relate to their men, you know, or their fucking, uh, <laughs> their, their pseudo men, I should say, uh, and, uh, and what, what real men uh, would think about these situations, what real men would do in these situations, how they would handle it, what they would say, all that kind of stuff. What a real man would do in these situations if they were presented with this bullshit. Okay? That's the point of view uh, that, that you didn't get. Okay? Because there is absolutely no fucking testosterone involved in this fucking show. Okay? There's no fucking, uh, there's, there's no fucking uh, heterosexual men involved in any aspect of this fucking show. Okay? So, uh, you know, if you're going to make a show, which initially Sex and City was a show about heterosexual relationships, then it's, it, it kind of helps if you have a straight guy around to ask questions to, okay? Uh, but they didn't do it bad on the original show, uh, and they're, they're sure as fuck not doing that here, okay? I mean, look at, look at Michael Patrick King's face. Do you really think this guy knows how to give a woman an orgasm? Fuck no. Fuck no, he does not, okay? And he never will. Okay, so why are you fucking trusting him to guide you through fucking heterosexual relationships? You see what I mean? Well, he can teach you how to fucking put a dick in your ass, you know? Uh, you know, but uh, I mean, that that's it, okay? <laughs> it's just not going to fucking happen, okay? So I'm going to give you a straight man's point of view, all right? That's what I do. That's the point of view you never got when you watch this show with your girlfriends, okay, and your, and your gay friends. Okay, and your slumber parties and all that kind of fuck that noise, okay? Uh, I will not censor myself, okay? So, uh, uh, the real question you need to ask yourself is can you handle it? Can you handle the truth? Because I don't think you can. In fact, I know you can. I know you can. You can't handle the truth, but you're going to get it anyway. You know why? Because somebody needs to tell the truth here. Nobody's telling the truth on this fucking shit, you know? I mean, I'm small fry, man. If I had like if I had like thousands and thousands of followers and shit, my, oh my God, YouTube would have censored me a long fucking time ago. They don't care about me, which is the only reason I can say what I, I wanna say. Trust me, if I had more subscribers and shit, YouTube would fucking censor the fuck out of me. Look what they've already done. Look what they've done to the fucking The Daily Wire. Look what they've done to fucking uh, Tim Pool, okay? Look what they did to the quartering, okay? Even my friend, my friend, Megan Fox, no, not the actress, uh, Megan Fox, they fucking, they censored her ass too. They demonetized her. And she's a fucking sweetheart, you know, because they don't want you to fucking, you know, I mean, who owns YouTube? YouTube is owned by Google. And where's Google? Silicon Valley. And where's Silicon Valley? San Francisco. No fucking shit, okay? They were fucking woke before anyone else was. They've been woke since the fucking 60s over there, okay? So yeah, absolutely. They don't want any, anything else, any to go against that narrative, which is why we have Rumble now and why we have Twitter now, thank God. Uh, fucking Elon Musk saved Twitter, okay? Because that was a, that was another echo chamber, you know. Uh, there is no fucking free speech. There is no free speech. We got to fight for free speech, you know. It, we're supposed to already have it, you know. It's already guaranteed, but it's not fucking guaranteed. There's ways around it, and you know that. That's the way the government works. That's the way. It, it's always the way it works, you know. There's ways around it, 
you know? Uh, you know, there's just like there's ways around discrimination. There's ways around fucking segregation. There's ways around to, in order to keep doing it. There's ways around sexism, you know, uh, in order to keep doing it. Okay. This show right here is a perfect example of that. And I will point that out here. Okay. Because a lot of people don't fucking seem to realize it. They're, they're feeding you this bullshit empowerment when the truth is they're taking power away from you. They're feeding you this fucking anti-racist fucking uh, rhetoric when the truth is, is they're being more racist than anyone else. You know? It's sad, but it's fucking true. This is the shit we gotta fucking stop. You know, anyway. So that's what we're gonna talk about here, okay? So if you're a snowflake, get the fuck out. Uh, get the fuck out of here right now. All right. I'm sorry I'm down right now. I am, okay. I just finished watching um, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery. And yeah, it's got me in a bad mood. Cause that, that's a character that I fucking grew up with. And just they just fucking ruined that guy. They ruined him. I mean, we're not talking about him though. But if you want to know why I'm in a bad mood, that's why, okay? So let's get the fuck over with this episode here. Because uh, in two days, yeah, in two days, fucking episode fucking four is going to drop. Jesus Christ. All right. Moving right along. Okay, so the name of this chapter, the name of this episode, uh, season two, episode three. The name of this episode is called chapter three. I'm not fucking making that up, okay? The name of this episode is called chapter three that is the title of this episode okay that should give you an idea of the creativity involved in this show the name of the episode is called chapter three season two episode three all right now, now that we got that out of the way okay so it starts off with carrie's walking around uh new york like she always does fucking daydreaming looking like fucking pennywise the clown uh yeah uh yeah that's the show always looks that way okay she looks like shit Okay, uh, today she's actually a little bit more conservative than normal. Okay, she, she's dressed like a grandma. She's got the grandma frock thing on. I don't know those fucking, I don't fucking know shit about female fashion. She's got the fucking blouse with the beads hanging out of it, so it makes her look older. You know, I mean, she's an old lady, okay? Sergio Parker's an old lady, okay? And for a show that is all superficial, it's all about fucking appearances, uh, you know, uh, and it, yes, they judge the men by appearances too. Of course I'm going to judge her by appearance. Fuck you. How do you like it? How do you like it when people judge you for your looks, Sergio Parker? Yeah. Exactly, huh? Not too, not too good, is it? Okay. Well, guess what? You're, I'm playing by your rules. Okay. I have no problem calling uh, women on this show ugly or looking like shit. You know why? Because they are all about what they look like. Every character on the show is always about what they look like. They got to wear a fucking Valentino. They got to wear a fucking um, uh, what, what, what the fuck was it? Uh, uh, Vivian Westwood. They got to wear all that fucking bullshit. The Chanel. The fuck, you know, they're all about that. <laughs> so, fuck yeah, I'll call you out on it. You're already in that area. Okay, so fuck it. Okay, now me, I don't know shit about that kind of stuff. What I do know is I do know that it, what looks good and what doesn't. Okay? If something looks good, I'm going to say it. If something looks like like shit, I'm going to fucking say it. Okay, I'm sorry. But, uh, Carrie, you were past your fucking, you're, you're past your SMV. Your sexual market value expired like 15 years ago. Okay, uh, it actually was pretty close to expiring when the show first started in the late 90s. Okay, but the whole show was about empowering women and that we can be sexy at any age. We can be fabulous at any age. Bull fucking shit you can. You know, uh, no, no, you can't. Okay, you have you have a window. Okay, a window where you're going to get hit on by the most, the most by men. Because you're the, that, that's going to be your most attractive. Okay, uh, the guys, the high value men. Okay, the guys that can get a lot of women, they're going to go after you when you're in that age group. You see what I mean? Okay, they're not going to go after the fucking 40-year-olds that, that already fucking have smoked more meat than Hickory Farms. They're not going to go after Samantha. I'm sorry, but they're not. Samantha is a fucking, is, is a fucking, uh, of a strikeout fucking Tuesday night, man. I'm at the bar. There's no hot girls. The only ones that are, that are hot that are there are with other guys. Or shit, you know? And maybe there's two of them that are pretty and I already talked to them and they don't want to fucking, they're not interested in me. And when, when, when I'm going to fucking like that, when that shit's going on, then okay, okay, Samantha, let's go. Come on. <laughs> okay, that's the truth, all right? That's, she's not my first choice. She's not the fucking queen of sex or none of that fucking shit, you know? They're not fucking carrying her on a fucking, on a cradle, you know, on their back, you know, through the fucking jungles and she's just sitting there like Cleopatra. No! Get the fuck out of here, dude. She is a fucking beer goggles, man. Beer fest. That's what she is. That's what Samantha is. That's what she's always been. Okay, no, not always. Maybe. Okay, Police Academy, she was hot in that. Okay, I don't remember. Big Trouble Little China. Yeah, we've all seen that. Okay, yeah. You know, Mannequin. Yeah, she is Mannequin. Okay, but those days are long gone. 
Okay, long gone. Okay, you gotta move on, all right? Quit looking back and look where you are right now, okay? And Samantha Jones just never did that. They never did that for Kim Cattrall's character. She was just this walking fucking sexy shit. You know, they wrote her that way. They wrote her that way because the show was written by gay guys, okay? And they got a standout character. Uh, so they're just gonna keep throwing fucking these good looking, high value men at her. Why? Because uh, it's bullshit. Because women uh, that look like King Patrell, act like King Patrell, uh, cannot get fucking laid. So, we got to have some sort of representation, okay? Ugly girls need to be represented, okay? Old ladies need to be represented, okay? Now, of course, of course, there are, uh, you know, there, there are exclusions, you know, exceptions, you could say. I do know women. Like, like, like Samantha Jones, okay, that were in their 40s and shit, and 50s and shit, that were fucking uh, younger, uh, super good looking guys, okay, I, I, I was an actor, okay, I, I, my friends were all actors and models and musicians and stand-up comedians and all that kind of shit, okay, uh, I was in my 20s, I was a young man, okay, I was working with a lot of people like that, okay, and I did know guys, uh, you know, super good looking guys and shit that had like sugar mamas, okay, that looked like Samantha Jones, that paid their bills, bought them motorcycles and shit like that, I knew, uh, look, look at my videos where we review Sex and the City, where we talk about that, okay, uh, you know, I, I've been through that. I lived in, I had my own sex in the city. Okay? I lived in Chicago. I was a young man in my 20s living in Chicago. Okay? Downtown Chicago. I worked. Okay? So, yeah. I got my own adventures. All right? And, yes, there were guys that would date a, 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 an older, middle-aged woman like that. Okay? Uh, but the difference between the, this show and the real-life guys that I know is that, is that fucking the real-life guys that I know got fucking paid for it. Okay? They didn't fucking fall in love. All right, they got paid for it. They were in love. They were in love with money. All right, moving right along. Okay, so Carrie's walking down the street, okay, looking like an old lady, okay, and she runs into Lisette. Now, you remember Lisette? Lisette is that pretty girl uh, from last season that's living downstairs in, from Carrie's building. That's her neighbor. Now, remember we saw her fucking boyfriend's uh, little dick last season? Remember when he answered the door with nothing but a towel on and it just conveniently fell down uh, while the door was still open and they were still having a conversation? Remember that? Okay, and then she got pissed off because her, her boyfriend uh, was cheating on her. Okay, well, basically, this girl, uh, Lisette, is basically a younger version of Carrie. But she's not a writer. She actually designs jewelry, and she used to be a model. Okay? Yeah, of course she did. Okay? Uh, but looking at her right now, uh, she looks like a fucking... She was at a Skittles factory uh, in the gay neighborhood, and it fucking... And terrorists bombed it. And she was one of the survivors. Okay, that's what she looks like now. Okay? So, uh, whatever prettiness she had is fucking completely hidden uh, beneath the fucking... Um, Beneath the terror of between, imagine fucking uh, uh, the neighborhood was blown up like Beirut was, okay? Yeah, basically. Imagine a pride parade blown up like Be Beirut. Okay, that's what she looks like. She looks like a survivor that they just dug out of the rubble. Okay, that's exactly what she fucking looks like, all right? So uh, take her prettiness and just throw it out the fucking window. Hey, at least it's better than when she wore that fucking, uh, what was it? That see through fucking potato sack last season and was walking down the street and that, you know? And all of us are supposed to act like we don't notice that she looks like a fucking idiot. You know, apparently not. All right. Patricia, Patricia Field, I'm ashamed of you. No, I, seriously, I really am. Okay? Because I, I know that fashion is a big part of this show. Like I said, I don't give a shit what they're wearing. Okay? I, I will tell you what looks good and what doesn't look good. Okay, and, and I know Patricia Field was the the, uh, the Emmy Award winning fucking costume designer on Sex and the City. And I guess she's working on this show too. But my God, what the fuck are you doing? You look like fucking shit, man. I've seen better things at a fucking Ross discount store. Okay, then the shit that I'm seeing here. Oh my God, anyway. So that's going on here, okay. Uh, you know, yeah, she looks like a fucking, she survived a terrorist bombing at a fucking Skittles factory, okay. Uh, and they're setting, uh, you know, and the reason she's out there on the park, she's at Hyde Park, okay, when Carrie runs into her because they're setting up a booth for her, uh, for her, they're gonna display her jewelry, okay. And she's hoping that the people, the buyers from like Neiman Marcus and Saks Avenue, that they come by the event and that they fucking, you know, purchase her jewelry so that she can fucking get a steady source of income from designing jewelry, okay. Uh, you know, and uh, Bryant, sorry, not, not Hyde Park, Bryant Park is where they are, okay, which is the for former uh, home of Fashion Week, which is what Carrie says. says. This is the former home of Fashion Week. Now, I do know what Fashion Week is, not because I've fucking ever been to a Fashion Week anything, okay, but my ex-girlfriend, I have an ex-girlfriend who's one of her, or one of her friends uh, is a professional photographer, okay, and he phot photographs models. That's how I knew a lot of models, okay, was through him, okay, and whenever Fashion Week was coming up, I don't even fucking remember when Fashion Week is, but whenever it was coming up, he was super fucking busy, okay, because this photos would be published in fucking magazines and shit, all right, so that's all I know about Fashion Week, otherwise I couldn't give two fucking shits, all right, anyway, uh, Carrie's invited, hopefully uh, Neiman and Sachs uh, will buy her jewelry, 
You know, um, by the way, uh, uh, this girl, Lisette, her hair looks like fucking shit, too. Okay, just pointing that out. Okay, and Carrie uh, is dressed like a grandma, like I said. Uh, she's wearing a beaded blouse with a pearl necklace, like three or four pearl necklaces, okay, and an old lady's jacket. Okay, so she's looking her 57 years. All right, Carrie um, uh, is embarrassed that she has she cannot hang out and have a cappuccino with Lisette because she has to go to the studio uh, to record her uh, the audio book version of her latest uh, book. Okay, uh, she's going to record the audio for it, all right? They're not getting an actress to do it. She's going to do it herself, all right? And she's embarrassed about that, okay? You know, uh, uh, except the show, okay? She's embarrassed by that, all right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Lisette tells her while she's walking away, uh, Lisette tells her, hey, you are Carrie Bradshaw, girl. Nothing embarrassing about that. Uh, except this show, okay? This show is pretty fucking embarrassing. Let me tell you something, okay? I just finished watching fucking in Indiana Jones and the Doll of Dysentery, okay? And let me tell you something. That character has been destroyed. Destroyed. This is the way Harrison Ford is going out. He's going out like this. Down the fucking toilet, okay? And the reason I bring it up is because Sarah Jessica Parker, this is how you're going out. This is how you're going out. Just like Harrison Ford. Down the fucking toilet. Down the shitter. Into fucking, nobody's gonna remember the good stuff anymore. This is what you're gonna be remembered for is this fucking abortion piece of shit. All right, anyway, so she goes off to meet her destiny, uh, reciting uh, chapter three from her fucking book, doing an audio recording for that. All right, okay, the next thing we have is Seema. Now, Seema, fucking, you know, uh, imagine Joan Collins, but if she was Indian uh, uh, in her fucking uh, late 50s, mid 50s, and about Oh, I'd say probably about 140, 150 pounds. Okay? And then she wears tight clothes. Tight, expensive clothes. Okay? With fucking, you know, with uh, wildcat patterns on it and shit. Leopard patterns, cheetah patterns on it. Okay? Uh, complete with headscarves uh, and fucking sunglasses. All right? And she's uh, constantly chain smoking, too. I know. All these are very attractive qualities, aren't they? I know, right? Anyway, well, she comes out of her apartment. And to smoke a cigarette, and she's talking to her driver. Her driver's coming to pick her up. When all of a sudden, uh, she gets her purse stolen. Okay, her bag. Okay, her Birkin bag. Now, ladies, I'm sure some of you know what that means. I know what a Birkin bag is. I've seen a few. I've dated girls that have them. Okay, but I, I couldn't fucking tell the difference between a fucking Birkin and a goddamn fucking Gucci. I, I don't fucking know. It doesn't fuck. It's just a fucking bag. Who gives a fucking shit? Okay, I don't care. But apparently Seema does care. Uh, this this guy, this purse snatcher, uh, who, by the way, is white in New York. Yes. Okay. In this neighborhood. Okay. Uh, he runs off. Uh, she screams for help. She starts asking people to help her. Help her. Somebody help me. Stop him. He took my Birkin bag. Uh, you know. And, of course, nobody gets involved. Nobody helps her. And that is actually true. Okay. Me living in the big city. Uh, you know, uh, whenever anything happens like that, nobody ever gets involved. Everyone just gets out of the way. They let the fucking... They let the fucking, um, the guy that committed the crime, they just get out of his way and let him keep running. Nobody wants to get involved. Nobody tries to help. Nothing like that. You know, I've, I've experienced that myself, okay? Uh, you know, I worked at this restaurant where we had a fucking a guy that was stealing uh, women's purses because a lot of you ladies are pretty stupid, okay? When you sit down at a restaurant, you always hang your, your purse behind the, the, the back of your chair where anybody behind you, you're not watching, can just go in there, stick their hand in there, grab your shit and walk out. Okay? You know, you women were doing that all the fucking time. And I, I caught a guy doing that. And we, you know, I tried to stop him. He, he bolted. The fucker was like Jesse Owens. Holy fucking shit, man. He bolted like the fucking, uh, the electric bolt, man. Like the Jamaican bolt. And I chased his ass. And I chased him around the block. You know, I fucking, finally, I jumped on top of him. And I grabbed him by the collar of his coat. Because this was winter. This was cold. It was cold outside. I grabbed him by the collar of his coat. And I just went down. Holding on to his jacket. Well, he went down too because I was holding on to his jacket and he was attached to it. So what did he do? He slipped out of his jacket and kept going. And I was out of breath by then, man. I mean, I was like, holy fuck. But I kept screaming the whole time. I was saying, hey, stop that guy. Stop that guy. And everyone just fucking got out of the way and let him keep running. You know, how fucked up is that? Uh, but yeah, yeah, I got his coat though. I got his leather coat. You know, he slipped out of it and kept running away, you know, and it was about, probably about like 23 degrees that night. You know, and I walk back into the restaurant with his coat, <laughs> which, by the way, I still have hanging up in my closet right now. <laughs> so at least I got something out of it. But he did get away. He did get away. He was faster than me. He was lighter than me and faster than me. 
But the point is, is that, you know, no one gets involved. And if you want to know, I mean, look what happened recently. Look at this fucker. I'll look up at Daniel, Daniel Penny right now. Okay. We had this guy named fucking Jordan Neely, some homeless guy who's a Michael Jackson. No, he's not. He's a fucking homeless guy who begs people for money. He's mentally ill. Okay. And he was threatening to kill fucking passengers on the train. He was acting violent. So this guy, this Marine's devil dog, like me, a Marine, went up there and subdued him and choked him out while the guy died. Okay, he used excessive force, okay? It was manslaughter, he's getting charged with manslaughter, okay? Who the fuck wants to do that? If he had fucking just minded his own business and let this guy fucking threaten the women that were on the fucking train and not gotten involved, he wouldn't be fucking sitting in a jail cell right now. You see what I mean? This is what happens when people get involved, okay? They're the ones that get punished for it. They're the ones that get punished for it, okay? So uh, rather than let that happen, you know, it's, it's better just not get involved. So SEMA should really not be upset that nobody helped her out because typically nobody would, all right? It's a big city. Nobody gives a shit. They don't give a shit about if your stuff gets stolen. That is something about the big city. That's true. Nobody gives a shit. So she's screaming, of course, blaming men because they didn't stop and help her. Well, why the fuck should they? Okay? Why the fuck should they? Anyway, she calls Carrie... Uh, and she complains, you know, on the phone. She's, she's chain smoking in the car. Okay, her, her driver showed up, you know. Uh, she's chain smoking her cigarettes in the car. And she's upset that her Birkin bag was stolen. It turns out that she actually bought that as a gift to herself. Of course it was. Of course it was. Uh, when she After she made her first uh, big deal, uh, I guess she sold an apartment or some shit, you know. And she that was her, that was her uh, gift to herself. Okay. So basically it's her ego that's fucking hurt, okay. And m more so than anything else, all right. So anyway, um, next scene we have here is Lisa. Lisa Todd Wexley, uh, the rich black woman, okay, and Charlotte, okay. They are at an Arbor School Board meeting, okay, which is like a PTA meeting, okay. So you got all these parents sitting there. You got the principal, who, by the way, is this closeted homosexual. This guy is just fucking, oh my God, he's this middle-aged guy who clearly um, is very timid, okay, but he tries to act like he's tough. Like he, like he has authority, but it's clearly this guy has suffered from major low self-esteem. Okay, so he's got to raise his voice to get people to, to take him seriously. It's pretty fucking obvious, all right? Anyway, uh, so Elisa Todd Wexley's sitting there with Charlotte, okay? On the school board meeting, okay, with a stuffy, uh, uptight, uh, straight man who's, like I said, is in the closet, okay, is speaking, okay? And Lisa wants to buy a gift, uh, ask Charlotte uh, what, to, what to give as a gift to Miranda. Because apparently, even though Miranda's in L.A. right now, she's not in New York with them, uh, Miranda introduced uh, Lisa to fucking, to Naya, Naya, uh, the black uh, college professor, law school professor that does no professoring. Yeah, her. Uh, and so she's going to get interviewed. Lisa is going to interview her for some fucking documentary, some bullshit documentary about strong, empowered women. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a stretch, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, she wants to give her a, a gift. She'll give her food or whatever. Charlotte says, Charlotte, they still, hey, Miranda likes her food. No, yes, of course she does. And she's got the fucking cellulite to prove it. All right. You know, we've seen, we've seen Miranda fucking eat out of the goddamn garbage can. All right, that's how fucking hungry she is all the fucking time. All right, so anyway, uh, yeah, so that's going on here. And then this principal um, who's clearly upset, okay, um, uh, very uncomfortable. He, he points out that there has been an incident in the school uh, that apparently uh, they have discovered a MILF list. A MILF list, okay? Now, um, now obviously, all the women that are there, there, there's no fathers at this meeting, by the way. It's all mothers. It's all women, all middle-aged women that are sitting there in the audience. There's no, there's no men. There's no fathers. I guess they're, they're too busy out there fucking working and providing all these fucking spoiled brat entitled women, okay, uh, uh, with with the money they need uh, to live in the, the lifestyles that they live, okay. So it's just the women that are there, okay. Of course, milf. When, once the word milf gets brought up, okay, that sparks uh, Lisa and, and Charlotte's interest and every other fucking uh, ugly, unattractive middle-aged woman that's sitting there too. They're all like, hmm, okay. All right. Uh, there's a milf list now. Now, how the fuck did they get a hold of one? How do they know it's a real one? Who the fuck knows? And if they did catch a milf list, why the fuck would they uh, announce this at a school board meeting? It makes no fucking sense. Okay, kids are always writing down stupid shit all the fucking time. They're always draw drawing dirty pictures. Okay, they're always writing graffiti with fucking sexual innuendos on there. Okay, this is nothing fucking new. Okay, anyone who's ever been to high school, okay, has looked inside the wall of a fucking toilet stall, has seen all sorts of fucking shit. This would be, be no fucking, there's nothing shocking about this. Teenagers do this shit, okay? And then, and but I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the truth here, okay? This is a bullshit scene. Not just because that no, 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 uh, no principal would talk about this, a milf list, in front of the whole fucking uh, of parents. That would never fucking happen, 
okay, number one. Number two, okay, the whole idea of the MILF thing, okay, is not something that teenage boys do. Now, now oh, bear with me here, okay? The MILF thing was invented in 1999 with the movie American Pie. That's the first time that MILF came into the lexicon, okay, of a popular culture. But MILF itself, okay, has always been something that women aspire to. It's never been something for the boys, okay? We don't make MILF lists, okay? What boys do, what teenage boys do, okay, is they say, hey, uh, hey, you know Todd's mom, man, that fucker. Oh, yeah, she's fucking hot. That's what we do. Now, notice what we said. We said Todd's mom. You know why we said Todd's mom? Because we don't know her fucking name, okay? Because we don't fucking know her. <laughs> it's just a girl, a woman that we saw at an event once, and we noticed that she had big tits, you know, and a nice ass, and we're like, oh, shit, you know, and we're young, fucking horny, fucking 15, 16-year-olds, okay? But we don't post that online. We don't dig up her name and find out her address or any of that shit. No. We, hey, Todd's mom. All we have to do is tell each other, hey, Todd's mom. And that's it. We all know exactly who they're talking about. Okay? And if a guy has never seen Todd's mom, then they're going to be like, okay, well, the next time I ever see Todd's mom, I got to get a good look at her. Okay? You see what I mean? That's how it works. It, it doesn't work like this. Okay? They don't write down the fucking names of these women, these MILF lists. This is something that they will keep internal. Okay, they wouldn't publish this shit. They wouldn't post it online. Okay, official MILF list of the fucking 10th grade. That would never fucking happen. Not only do we get kicked out of school if you get caught with that, all you have to do is check where the email came from. Okay, um, but uh, no, no, you would have to do research. You would have to find out who the, who these what these women's real names are. Okay, and post that. And if you're going to do that, it means you're going to know where they live too. You see what I mean? Not only that, but it would be embarrassing for your own friends if one of these women's names is, is, a, is a friend of yours mom. Okay, that that kid, that boy, no no boy wants his mom to be on that fucking list. No boy wants all, all of his guy friends at school to be talking about fucking his mom. Okay, no no guy wants that, all right? So that would never happen. He would be the first one to rat them out for even trying something like this, okay? So this is all bullshit right here, okay? Women, the, the, the whole like, concept of MILF, mom I'd like to fuck, is something that was popularized by women and is exploited by women, not teenage boys. When we exploit it, we do it completely differently, like I just said, okay? Hey, I want to fuck Chris's mom. Chris's mom is fucking hot. Have you seen her? You know, that's how we do it. We don't fucking pull out Alexandria, you know, <laughs> Alexandria Rochelle Stewart, yes. <laughs> the 45-year-old mother of, you know, no, no, no. We, we don't fucking do that. Okay, that's all it is, okay? Nothing else, okay? It's the insecure 50-something-year-old women that, are, that have lost their looks that are searching for their youth, trying to relive it all again, back when they were hot and guys used to hit them all the time. They're not, they're not getting hit on like that anymore. Okay, those women are the ones that embrace the concept of MILF. Okay? Not the 16-year-old boy. Okay? Not the 16-year-old boy. And no matter how much the 16-year-old boys, okay, and I, I, I was 16 once, I had the hots for my art teacher. Fuck yeah, I did, Mrs. Sacker. Oh, yeah, I wanted to fuck her bad. She was hot. Like, yeah, yeah, she was in her fucking late 30s, but goddamn it, she looked fucking good. And I was, I was 16, 17 years old. So what the fuck, you know? But I didn't make a list. And I don't even remember her first name. I have to look up, pull up the yearbook to, to find out her first name. The point is I would never publish something like that, okay? But all my guy friends knew she was hot. Some of them wished they had a class with her, you know? <laughs> but, you know, that's just it, you know? It, it didn't go further than that. It didn't go further than that, Okay? When you got an insecure fucking uh, old ladies that wish they were young and beautiful and hot and getting got hit on like they did when they were younger, you know, then it, all of a sudden milk becomes important to them. You know, th that's all this fucking show is. It's just insecure women. It's like the Golden Girls. Okay? <laughs> it's like the Golden Girls trying to fucking get dolled up and go clubbing. You know, it, it's bullshit. Nobody wants to fucking see this. And that's what this is. It's really pathetic. I know it's supposed to come off as empowering and feminist. You know, oh my God, you know. We're being objectified because we're so hot. <laughs> the young guys still like us. <laughs> no, we don't. Your Botox ass face and your cellulite, and your, your sagging tits. No, we don't like you. We don't, we don't like you that way. No. And let me tell you something, okay. Uh, from a guy who has fucking been turned on by MILFs, okay. Uh, both of you, Charlotte and Lisa, you're both too fucking old. Okay. You're in the GILF category now, okay? Sorry, 57 years, that's too fucking old to be a MILF. If you're a MILF, you're in your late 30s and you're in your mid-40s at the most. And that's it. That's it. 
okay? You, you, both of you are way beyond that, okay? So no, you would never make it on a MILF list. Sorry, realistically, you would not, okay? You know why? Because uh, uh, young boys especially, we're, uh, or even old, guy, even old guys like me especially, we're attracted to fucking beautiful young girls, okay? Not 57-year-olds with too much fucking Botox on their fucking face, all right? And dressed like fucking Mary Poppins. No, it's not going to happen, all right? You know, they didn't come back to, from a fucking uh, a matinee showing of a fucking Lion King. No, sorry, not for us. Okay, anyway. So like I said, the important thing to take away from this is that MILF has always been more of a thing for women than it has been for men, okay? All right, moving right along. It's like fuck, it's like a open relationships, okay? No guy ever fucking uh, <laughs> ever wants an open relationship, okay? That's always the wife that wants it, okay? It's never the guy. <laughs> oh my God, but y'all fucking believe it, right? Anyway, okay, moving right along, all right. <laughs> And yes, I do talk from experience, all right? All right, so uh, Lisa tells Charlotte that she wants to get that list, okay, and, uh, which in real life would never exist, okay? Uh, the moms are all uh, turned on at the prospect of having their names on that fucking list, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, how's that for fucking your husbands, right? Yeah. See, it's okay when women do it, but when guys do it, no, no. Th 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 put them in jail, throw away the key. When women do it, it's like, oh, it's naughty, ooh. You see? But when a guy lusts after a 17-year-old girl, no, throw him in fucking jail. Okay? Throw him in fucking jail right now before he uh, grapes that girl. You see what I mean? You see what I'm fucking talking about, the hypocrisy? Yeah. All right, anyway. So that's going on here, okay? And uh, the moms are all turned on at the prospect of being on that list, okay? And he calls, uh, and and the principal guy, Mr. Fucking Pussy himself, calls out um, uh, Lisa and Charlotte because while he's trying to present... The MILF list up there. Talk about the MILF list, the disgusting MILF list that he uncovered at the school. Uh, Lisa and Charlotte are talking, so he's, he interrupts. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Is there something you want to say? Is there something you want to add? Because you both seem pretty chatty right now. You know, that kind of thing. They're like, nope, no, we got another to say. Bull fucking shit. Okay, but you know where this is going, right? Okay, the next scene is Carrie uh, is recording her audio book. Uh, she's recording her audio book for her, uh, you know, the, the latest book that she that she wrote. I forgot the name of it, but I'll pull it up later. Okay, um, uh, basically, this is the book that deals with uh, what happened to her when Big when when Big was murdered uh, by her. It's basically like that OJ book. Uh, if I did it, I have that book here, by the way. Uh, OJ's uh, book about he talks about in his book he talks about what would have, how it would have gone down, how Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman would have died if. He had been the one that killed him. He goes into complete detail in this book about how that would have happened if he had done. Okay, well, that's basically what Carrie's doing here. She's doing her audiobook recording of what would have happened, all right, uh, with Big, okay? So anyway, Carrie records her audiobook about to do uh, chapter three there on her Kindle, okay? And her, uh, her fat ass agent, okay, remember her? No, I didn't either. Anyway, her fat ass agent comes in there and tells her that the book, uh, uh, that the reason they didn't hire an actress to do this, like a Julianne Moore or a Juliana Margulis or whatever Julia is out there, uh, is because this is a personal story. This is very personal for Carrie and therefore Carrie's voice needs to be the one that says it, okay? That's why they did not hire an actress. Okay, it needs to be read by the author, okay? And not just another Julia, okay? So Carrie uh, can't stand uh, the smell of this fucking uh, production assistant that's in there. He's this fat guy, he's wearing a mask, you know, a fucking COVID mask, and his armpits are really sweaty and smelly, so when he goes in there to adjust her mic, you know, his armpits are all in her fucking face. She's just like... At one point, she's just like... Like that. And the guy, of course, is because all men are fucking idiots. They're completely clueless to the fact that she's fucking disgusted by his B.O. Okay, so he just keeps doing it more. You know, moving his fucking armpits in front of her face and all that, too. And he gets the fat girl, too. the fat, Her fat agent, as well. Because he's a fucking dumbass, like all men are on the show. Completely oblivious to what's going on. All right? Okay, and that's going on here. They adjust the mic, okay? And uh, she pinches her nose at one point. Okay, and they are booked. Uh, it turns out that they're booked for five days. Okay, she's going to be in this booth recording her audiobook for five days, okay? And clearly this bothers her, okay? Because she's going to have to talk about how Big died, all right? You know, uh, it's a book about you killing your husband. You need to have enough time. Okay, well, I might have paraphrased some of that, but it's still what happened. Okay, she did murder Big. We all know that. She murdered Big, all right? So uh, she recounts the events 
okay, uh, uh, at the end of the of season one, episode one of this piece of shit show from last year, okay, uh, but she stumbles, okay, she, clearly she's uncomfortable doing this, all right, uh, she's not there, okay, the guilt is getting to her, okay, uh, and maybe maybe somewhere in the back of her mind, uh, she's thinking that, you know, there is no statute of limitations for murder, and that she might be very well be incriminating herself right now, okay, uh, she's clearly not okay with this, okay, uh, but they make her do it anyway. They make her uh, reread it anyway, okay? The chapter that deals with how she discovered Big having in the middle of a heart attack and then how she killed him right after that, okay? To make sure he died, okay? Uh, but they make her do it anyway, okay? Uh, now, now, I'm going to raise a bullshit flag here real quickly because uh, why didn't her agent just ask her first if she wanted to record this book, okay? That's never explained. Why didn't her agent just say, hey, Carrie, we would like for you to, to, to read your own book Okay, uh, and, and especially that chapter that deals with your husband's death. Okay, uh, are you okay doing it? Because if you're not, I'll hire an actress, but I think that we should really have you do it because, you know, uh, a, a story this personal needs the actual author. Okay, the person who actually lived through this uh, to talk about it. Okay, and they should have asked her first. Okay, and then she could have said like, ah, no, I don't think I can. That would have been it right there. That would have been it. But no, they have to draw out this whole fucking scene where she's fucking trying to get through it, but she really can't, and nobody wants to take the hint that she can't do it. That's all bullshit. That's all fucking bullshit, okay? You, you, the audience out there, okay? If this had happened to you, if you'd murdered your husband and wrote a book about it, and they wanted you to do the audio recording, and you knew that you wouldn't be able to get through it, doesn't it make sense that you would fucking just say, no, I, I'm not, I don't want to be the one that reads it? Okay, wouldn't that, wouldn't that decision have been made way before you ever paid the fucking studio for five days, okay, and paid the producers to make this fucking thing happen? Shouldn't all that have been done already before you even set foot into a goddamn studio? Of course, of course. So this would never happen in real life. This is bullshit. Anyway, like, a normal person would not have agreed to this, okay? Anyway, so it's not okay, but it's fucking bullshit. Anyway, okay, it's only been a year. How fast did this book get published? Okay, so she wrote the whole fucking book last season somehow, and then she got it published, and now she's doing the audio version of it. Like, in less than a year, all this is happening. What the fuck is she write? Okay, how the fuck does she write a book for, for events that take place in less than a year? How can you get a book out of that? What happened that was so special to her? And that fact, nothing, nothing happened to her. Other than she moved back into her old apartment. She went back to where she started. Uh, oh, now she's super fucking rich because she inherited Big's money. That's it. That's it. Okay, one of her best friends uh, became a fucking, uh, became a gay fucking land whale. You know, like, what the fuck happened? Nothing. Nothing important. Anyway. Not to Carrie, at least. Nothing important to Carrie happened, all right? So, yeah, so I raised a bullshit flag on that, all right? Okay. Um, uh, she tries to change the words, okay, while, while, while they're recording her. Uh, but he tells her, no, 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 no. You know, now this is just a plea for help. She's basically trying to get them. Hey, listen, I, I don't want to do this. She's trying to find an excuse to not record this thing, okay? Because it bothers her. Uh, you know, she's like, "Oh my god, well, can I just like uh, maybe cut this part out and, and, and add this part in there?" She said, "No, no, 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 Carrie. I know you wrote the fucking book, but you have to record it the way it was published, okay?" <laughs> and so that's not working. So obviously, it's going to be a problem for her. Okay, all right. I'm going to stop my review right here, but I'll be back shortly to continue my review of it. Just like crap. I thank you very much for watching this long, and I'll see you soon on the next one.